In his concluding statement about the bomb, Bruno quoted a physicist who worked on it, his close friend, Leo Zillard. I had not been long back from Hiroshima when I heard someone say in Zillard's presence that it was the tragedy of scientists that their discoveries were used for destruction. Zillard replied as he more than anyone else had the right to reply that it was not the tragedy of scientists, it is the tragedy of mankind. Then the film cuts immediately to Auschwitz and the machinery of mass murder. Here Bruno made a speech that seems passionately to contradict the overall thrust of the Ascent of Man series. He warns that science gives humanity awesome powers and it is essential that mankind does not misuse them. It's said that science will dehumanize people and turn them into numbers. That's false, tragically false. Look for yourself. This is the concentration camp and crematorium at Auschwitz. This is where people were turned into numbers. Into this pond were flushed the ashes of some four million people. And that was not done by gas. It was done by arrogance. It was done by dogma. It was done by ignorance. When people believe that they have absolute knowledge with no test in reality, this is how they behave. This is what men do when they aspire to the knowledge of gods. Science is a very human form. Science is a tribute to what we can know, although we are fallible. In the end, the words were said by Oliver Cromwell. I beseech you in the bowels of Christ, think it possible you may be mistaken. I owe it as a scientist to my friend Leo Zillard. I owe it as a human being to the many members of my family who died here to stand here as a survivor and a witness. We have to cure ourselves of the itch for absolute knowledge and power. We have to close the distance between the push button order and the human act. We have to That bit is completely unbearable to me. We he bends to, to grab the mud from the pond, except that it isn't mud, it's human ash. That, however many, what, three minutes, is a miracle of capturing somebody's inner angst, Jacob Bronowski's inner angst. I feel sure that if I can connect Bruno's anguish at Auschwitz with his wartime research in which science was used to kill people, I will reach a deeper understanding of my father's complicated attitude towards science. And that is why I'm back where the mystery began, in California. I'm in Los Angeles to visit a Hollywood film director, Mick Jackson. I've discovered that he began his career at the BBC and was behind the camera when Bruno was in front of it at Auschwitz. I'd recognize that knock anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Mick, hi. <laughs> So Mick, I've come to see you because you actually filmed The Ascent of Man with my father. Could you tell me a bit about what the whole process was like? Was it a big team effort or was, did he lead it? Did he drive it? 
Um, his ideas drove it and drove us. Were you awed by him at all? Of course, everybody was awed by him. The, the whole crew was awed by him. We loved him. Um, we called him Prof. Let's, um, let's talk about the programme that I really have to tell you I profoundly admire that you actually made in The Ascent of Man, in which my father is in Auschwitz and the programme ends with a slow motion sequence of his lifting uh, ash. Human ashes. Human ashes. Out of a pond. Did he balk at all at going? He didn't want to go. Uh, he was very uneasy about going and I can understand why. It hadn't been tidied up, didn't have kind of wheelchair access and guide rails. You walked in and you saw these mountains of shoes and suitcases and false teeth and spectacles and things. And then you saw the gas ovens. I mean, it's rusty but you probably still serviceable, the crematoria, and this pond at the back in which, for want of somewhere else, better, they had flushed the ashes from the crematorium. You couldn't help but be affected by it. And I know the, the, the day that we wanted to film, Bruno walked alone around it and saw the same things that I had. But he had to be aware of the fact that he had this reputation of being the man who always had something to say. And he says that that's when the, the quote from Oliver Cromwell came into his head. I beseech you in the bowels. I beseech you, in, and the way he says, in the bowels of Christ, makes me cry every time I see it. And I was there, and it's 30 years Think it ago. possible that you <laughs> are, may be mistaken. mistaken. I, do you know what? It feels like a message in a bottle to me. Yeah, that's, that sense was with us all. I beseech you in the bowels of Christ. Think it possible you may be mistaken. I 